Hello, and thank you for listening to Science Stories with Mrs. C. Today, I'm reading a book titled Rocks and Minerals. It's from the Jump into Science series by National Geographic Kids, and it's packed with tons of true facts and real information. That means this book is nonfiction. It's not fake. It's all real. <laughs> we also have our author on the front cover. His name is Steve Thomasek, so he wrote the words. There's also an illustrator included, Kyle Poling. So even though this is nonfiction and there will be real photographs, there are also some illustrations like this little guy down here. So he drew the pictures. All right, before we begin, let's look at some vocabulary words that maybe you've heard before, but you're not exactly sure what they really mean. Rocks and minerals. Here are six words that I chose for us to study before we begin listening to our book. The first one is geologist. Next we have core, jewelry, flow. This one's actually two words, tectonic, plates. And our last one is dissolve. So I do have the definitions typed out on this page, but let's look at each of these words with a picture to help us better understand. A geologist is a scientist who investigates how rocks were formed. So in this picture, you can see the geologist is holding this hammer, right? Not a super scientific tool, <laughs> but he's probably got other things back in his lab. It looks like he's about to crack this rock open. By studying this rock on the inside and outside, he might learn how old the rock is, what minerals help to form it, all sorts of different things. So he's going to study this rock. Our next word is core, and in this book, the core is going to mean the very hot, very dense center or middle of our planet. So here's the crust of the earth where we live. Below that is the mantle, and then way down in the center or the middle, we've got this inner and outer core. So that's the middle or center of our planet. It's very hot. Jewelry means decorative items that people wear, such as bracelets, rings, or necklaces. So all of this in this image, all of this is jewelry. And you can see it's made out of gold, which is a metal, but there are also some gemstones in here as well. So you might see some of those in our book. Flow. Flow means to move along or out steadily and continuously in a stream. So when I think of a stream, I usually think of water, but many things can flow in this pattern. Right here, you can see it's got a flow that's continuing. It's going from one side all the way to the other. So different things can flow. Gas can flow, air can flow, water can flow. It just means to move along steadily and continuously. Tectonic plate. A tectonic plate is a massive, that means really big, irregularly, so not regular, shaped slab of solid rock. So it's a big chunk of rock, right? On top of our Earth's crust. Right here, these tectonic plates are moving away from each other. See the arrows? So it's making a fissure or a hole. Over here, these plates are moving together. They're pushing into one another. And so some mountains are being pushed up along this fault line. Over here, these two are moving different directions. So the earth is shifting, the crust is moving, rocks are breaking, all sorts of things are, different, uh, are happening differently. So tectonic plates are irregularly shaped, really big pieces of solid rock, and they're actually moving, which is pretty cool. And our last word is dissolve. Dissolve means to become mixed with a liquid and disappear. So look at this, this is sugar right here, and this is water. When you mix it all up, you don't see the sugar anymore, so you'll say it's dissolved. You might have done this before with something like salt instead of sugar. You can put salt in, you can mix it all up, and then it's dissolved. Now, that doesn't mean when it disappears, it's completely gone. If you've ever tasted sugary water or salty water, you can definitely taste that that sugar or that salt stayed in there. But we can't see it any longer. It looks like it's mixed in completely. All right, let's go ahead and begin reading. Rocks and minerals. Rocks are all around us. Have you ever wondered where all these rocks come from? What are rocks made of? 
Here's your chance to become a rock star and discover the wonderful world of rocks. The first rocks. Here's our heading on this page. So this whole page is going to be about the first rocks. Scientists who study rocks are called geologists. Most geologists believe that the first rocks here on Earth formed more than 4.5 billion years ago. Geologists think that in the beginning, our Earth started as a big ball of super hot dust and gas. As the planet cooled, the gas turned into a liquid called magma. Later, the magma cooled to make solid rocks. As the Earth cooled, the heaviest rocks sank to the center of the planet to make the core. See it in the middle there? The core. The lightest rocks floated to the surface to make the crust. Between the core and the crust is the mantle. So here's this part too. The building blocks of rocks. This is another heading. So I know these pages are going to be about the building blocks of rocks. Almost all rocks are made of tiny building blocks called minerals. Most minerals have their own special shape called a crystal. Some rocks are made from only one type of mineral, while others have many different minerals joined together. So let's look at some of these up close. We've got copper, amethyst, jade, mica, calcite, sapphire, garnet, <gasps> emerald, salt, quartz, snow crystal, iron pyrite, diamond, there's so many. Geologists have discovered more than 2,500 different minerals on our planet. Each mineral has its own special properties. A property is something that scientists use to describe an object. Some mineral properties include the shape of the crystal, its color, how hard it is, and how it shines. Some minerals are used to make jewelry and for decorations. These special minerals are called gems. We saw some of those, didn't we? How rocks are used. Over time, people discovered that rocks could be used for many different purposes. Thousands of years ago, people used rocks to make tools such as arrowheads and scrapers. In the past, rocks were also used for making great buildings. The pyramids in Egypt are made from rock. The ancient Greeks and Romans also built with rock. People are still using rocks in buildings. Hmm, is any part of your home? made from rock? Probably so. How rocks form. Minerals don't just magically come together to make rocks. Rocks can only form when the conditions are right. After many years of studying different rocks, geologists discovered that rocks form in three main ways. Geologists use the way a rock forms to put it into one of three different groups or types. The three main types of rock are called igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary. So these are three different types of rocks. Igneous rocks. This is the first type. Igneous rocks form as hot, liquid rock called magma cools off. If the magma cools slowly, the rocks often form large crystals. If the magma cools quickly, crystals do not usually form. How fast the magma cools usually depends on whether the igneous rocks form deep underground or at Earth's surface. Look at that. When hot magma cools underground, it usually does so slowly. Igneous rocks that form inside the Earth often have large crystals. Granite and gabbro are two types of igneous rocks that form underground. When hot magma reaches the surface of the earth, geologists call it lava. Look at that huge explosion of lava. Unlike magma inside the earth, lava cools quickly, so large crystals don't usually form. As the lava cools, it makes hills and mountains called volcanoes. These form on the surface of the earth and can also form underwater. They're underwater volcanoes. How cool. The most common rock in the world is called basalt. Here's a picture of it and it forms from lava. Basalt is the type of rock that makes up most of the Earth's crust under the ocean. All right, so those were igneous rocks. Now we're gonna learn about metamorphic rocks. A second type of rock is called metamorphic rock. Metamorphic rocks are rocks that have changed their form. 
Metamorphic rocks usually form deep inside the earth where they get heated and squeezed by the rocks around them. Sometimes metamorphic rocks have their minerals squeezed so much that they look like they came out of a tube of toothpaste. The minerals in some metamorphic rocks look like they have flowed. There's that vocabulary word. They never turn back into liquid though. Instead, they stretch and bend like warm clay. Two common metamorphic rocks are gneiss and schist. So look at the flow. Look at the pattern in that gneiss. Do you see that? You can see that flow like a river, right? That's the flow. Geologists have discovered that the crust of the earth is not one solid piece. Instead, it is made up of separate chunks called tectonic plates. These tectonic plates move slowly. When tectonic plates move, they squeeze the rocks around them. So there you can see those lines on this map. Those are the different tectonic plates of the earth, those big moving land masses. When rocks get caught between tectonic plates, they get squeezed and pushed high up in the air. This is how many of the largest mountains on earth form. Often you can see big bins called folds in the rocks that make up these mountains. Metamorphic rocks usually form underneath these tall mountains where the squeezing and heating is the greatest. All right, so we learned about igneous rocks. We learned about metamorphic rocks. Now we're gonna learn about sedimentary rocks. The third major type of rock is called sedimentary rock. Sediment is another name for tiny pieces of rock that have broken off from larger rocks. Sand, grains, pebbles, and mud are all different sizes of sediment. Sediment is created when wind, water, and ice wear down the rocks at the surface of the earth. Sediment is carried by rivers and streams to lakes and oceans where it begins to collect. Over time, the sediment piles up deeper and deeper. Layers at the bottom of the pile slowly get turned back into solid rock again. Not all sedimentary rocks have grains in them. Some form from crystals that grow in water. As water flows over rocks, some of the minerals seem to disappear. Scientists say that the minerals dissolve. There's that word. When the water with the dissolved minerals begins to dry up or evaporate, new mineral crystals begin to form in it. Sedimentary rocks that form this way are called evaporites. Grains and crystals aren't the only things that you can find in sedimentary rock. Sometimes you can find prints of leaves, seashells, or even dinosaur bones. When living things die, they get buried in sediment. If the conditions are right, they will turn to stone along with the settlement and make a fossil. So look at that. All of those different things. We've got dinosaur bones, trilobites, fern. You can see them in those sedimentary rocks. It's so cool. The rock cycle. Rocks on our earth are always changing. In some places, wind and water wear rocks away. In other places, lava from volcanoes brings new rocks to the Earth's surface. Over millions of years, the minerals that make up old rocks get recycled into new rocks of different types. Geologists call this the rock cycle. And you can see the cycle, it just keeps going, right? It's like a circle, it just continues over and over and over, it just repeats itself. Rocks are all around us. They form in different ways and they have many uses. The minerals that make rocks have many different properties and you can use those properties to help tell them apart. The next time you pick up a rock, look at it closely. It might have been a part of an ancient volcano or it may have some cool crystals in it. It might even contain a fossil from a creature that's been extinct for millions of years. By learning to read the rocks, you too can work like geologists, the rock stars of the science world. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed listening to Rocks and Minerals today. If you'd like to check this book out from your local library, remember you can look it up by the author's name, Steve Tomasek, and the title, Rocks and Minerals. All right, I will see you next time. I hope you have a great day. Goodbye.